Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Business Essentials. Today, we're sponsored by both Mail Chamber of Commerce and Foster City Chamber of Commerce. We want to uh, welcome our speaker, Sandra Car uh, Clark, and uh, she's with LinkedIn Mentoring. She's an expert in LinkedIn. She's, she will provide some tips on how we could power up our listing and draw uh, create more business for ourselves. And I'm sure most of us have LinkedIn accounts and uh, let's see how we can improve our LinkedIn account and interaction with each other. I also ask that you link to the San Mateo Area Chambers LinkedIn account or we're sort of uh, in infancy, we're growing right now. So <laughs> link to our LinkedIn account if you can. I ask you to, that you stay muted during the presentation Use the chat if you have questions and Sandra has left some time towards the end for a Q&A. So uh, today we have Mara Curry on board and Joanne Bohegan from the Foster City Chamber. And from our San Mateo Chamber, we have Cheryl Angeles, the CEO and President, and I am your Director of Communications and Marketing, Pauline Chung. Welcome everybody. And I'll turn it over to Sandra. Good morning, everyone. I uh, was uh, noticing somebody there who was rubbing their hands together. It has turned cold for us wimps in the South Bay area, isn't it? Uh, kind of a shock to our system. Um, so I, I'll talk a little bit about myself. I'm going to give you a load of information. It'll be overwhelming. It's okay. If you take just one small tip away from today, um, you'll be ahead of the game. I really encourage you to reach out to me on LinkedIn, connect with me, let me know where we met. I'm happy to answer quick questions that way. And um, things you always wanted to know about LinkedIn. So I love to talk about LinkedIn from the point of view of the power of LinkedIn to build your business. And by using it for relationship building, not just selling to people. Um, adding connections, but actually using it to develop those relationships like you're taught in those wonderful networking groups you go to. And by all means, put your questions in the chat as we go through. I may not get to them right away. I will at the end. And um, if it's something that's so specific, we can take that offline. You can reach out to me afterwards. So I like to talk about my typical clients because sometimes people think, oh, I should be able to figure out how to do this. You know, is it just me? Am I just not smart enough? Am I just so useless on social media? No, it's not you. So my typical clients are actually busy, smart professionals and they're busy and they're smart and they're doing what they're good at. So could they figure all this stuff out on their own? I'm sure they could watch some videos, read some blogs, but they wanna get it done. They wanna look good quickly, efficiently. They want to learn how to use LinkedIn efficiently and quickly and move on going back to what they're good at. So, you know, don't feel like there's something wrong with you if you don't know how to do it. You're in very good company. So LinkedIn is, oh my God, overwhelming. I've had more people lately because of all the stuff that LinkedIn has added. They go into LinkedIn, they think, okay, I'm just gonna go in, I'm gonna do a few things, I'm gonna be good, I'm gonna do this. And they go in and they go, oh my God, who moved my cheese? It's different, it's changed again. And they give up, they go, I don't have time to deal with this. They go out, they think, okay, I'll come back later. Well, later you're thinking, oh, I just don't feel in the mood. I don't have time to deal with this. And they're going away from LinkedIn because they're just so frustrated. And I'll talk later about just how many changes there have been in the last few months where the rate of change has accelerated just crazily. Uh, they actually make at least little changes every single day. You may or may not notice it. Some of them are major, some minor, but they're really changing all the time. And it's really frustrating and overwhelming. So I haven't had a chance to see most of your profiles. So this is a, just kind of an honesty check here. If you think about your own LinkedIn profile on a scale of one to five with one being I think I remember my password. I'm not sure. It's been so long. I don't remember. Through to five, which is, dang, I think I'm pretty good. I just checked in this morning to see if there were any tips and tricks I might be able to add to my repertoire and to say hi to my uh, friends at the chamber. 
who have so generously hosted this. Um, so if you, where you are in that scale, if you just want to put it in the chat, one, two, three, four, five, where you think you are with your profile. And when I get to connect with you after, you know, I'll be checking. Uh, but go ahead and just put your number in and give me a sense of where you think uh, your numbers are. Uh, so we've got one, two, three, four, four question mark <laughs> with a smile. Okay, you know, Stephanie, I'm going to be checking on you. Um, oh, a seven. Okay, Shahida, yeah, really, <laughs> I am definitely going to be checking. My scale only went to five. Um, <laughs> okay, so, so we kind of got a range there, low to high, a lot of you in the middle. And I'll talk about what I consider um, a good LinkedIn profile. Um, I did want to check, okay. So I'm going to be talking about getting found on LinkedIn. Uh, getting found is a combination of keywords and activity to post or not to post. That is the question. Um, if, if any of you are posting regularly on LinkedIn, go ahead and put that in the chat. You know, post three times a week, five times a week, once a month. Uh, and I won't look at it right now, but I will get a sense later on of where you are in that posting thing. Is it even worthwhile posting? In many cases, I'm going to tell you the answer is no. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what's new on LinkedIn. There's so much that's new. Can't talk about it all, but I'll touch on some of the main parts. So I'm going to talk about my mistake number one. Now, mistake number one used to be not having a LinkedIn profile at all. But I'm hoping that most of you now are pretty much on board, although I still do run into people who aren't on LinkedIn. But I've changed that because this is what I see all the time now. Do you remember that old Kevin Costner movie, Field of Dreams? You know, build it and they will come. Well, my LinkedIn equivalent is build it and think they will come. People will say to me, oh, I've got a great profile. And I'm going, so who cares? If you're just building it, letting it sit there, nobody is going to come and look for it. Even if you've got good keywords, LinkedIn sees there's no activity and it just parks you. You're not going to show up. Usually when I work with a client, if they uh, measure how many views of their profile and the number of views that LinkedIn gives you is like for the last 90 days. So you see, you know, 10, 20, 50, 100. Uh, and it will usually increase dramatically just in the 24 hours after working with me. And I'd like to take credit, but to be honest, the majority of that is that they're signaling LinkedIn, they're engaged, engaged, active, interested, and LinkedIn rewards them and makes them a lot more visible to people. People see them, look. So um, don't just let it sit there. And I'll talk about more things to do with that. Now, there's over half a billion users on LinkedIn. Uh, I used to keep changing the number all the time. It was half a billion, it was 600 million, it was 700, 750. And I got tired of changing my slide. So now I just say it's, it's a lot of people. It's a boatload of people. These are all potential people to make connections with, to do business with. Now I often have people say to me, oh, you know, I never got a, a client from LinkedIn. I never got any a job. And I said, well, how many opportunities have you lost on LinkedIn? And they said, well, I don't know. I go, yeah, exactly. You don't know. They came by, they looked, they didn't like, they walked away. Uh, whether you're a job seeker, you have your own business, you're promoting your company, you need to represent them well. Now, this is my magical mystery formula for LinkedIn success. Really rocket science here. It needs to be complete. Now, if you have on LinkedIn, it shows you're an all-star. Don't get too carried away with how good it means you are. All that means is that all the basic components are filled in. If you filled in all of the basic component with dog poop, dog poop, dog poop, I'm sorry, you'd be an all-star dog pooper. It doesn't mean anything other than complete. Um, so, uh, quality, not just quantity. My husband never got to be an all-star because you have to have, I think, at least three jobs in your history. He'd been at the same company all his life. So complete. You need keywords. You should figure out what your keywords are. 
keywords are the words that somebody would use if they were looking for somebody with your skills. Now, we all want people to have integrity, to be honest, to be hardworking, but those are not keywords that people are going to search for. Those are qualities. So keywords are actually skills. Skills might include your uh, job title. If you're a realtor, you absolutely want to have the word realtor scattered throughout your profile. If you're an insurance broker, absolutely. Um, if you're an assistant, that may not mean anything. It might not be a really useful keyword. So you want your keywords. You need a certain number of connections and I'm gonna talk more about how many you should have later. Might frighten some of you. You need activity. And I, if I could have lightning bolts pointing into this one, I'm not clever enough on, on PowerPoint to do that, but this would be the one. <laughs> Thank you, Mark, I appreciate it. Um, then this is the magic on LinkedIn. If you are active on LinkedIn, you are gonna get rewarded by being visible. Now, all of those things together give you maximum high search engine optimization ranking. This is specific to LinkedIn, but it does have implications to Google as well. So really hard, right? Rocket science. Now, the basic components of a profile are your photo. I'm sorry, there's no getting away from it, folks. You've got to have a photo. It should look like you. You want a good day, not your best day, not your wedding day or your kid's wedding day. I'm sorry, you're never going to look like that again. But I should be able to meet you on Zoom and not go, Mark, I'm sorry, I was, I was looking to meet Mark today, but I, I I don't see anybody that looks like him. It's embarrassing. I've had that happen. I'm going to have to update my pictures because my hair color's changed. Um, you know, you need to look like you. Professional headline. It is called a headline. It is not called a job title. So I'll be talking more about that. Your about section that used to be called your summary. Wonderful opportunity for your second 30, 30 second elevator pitch. And I will be talking more about that. Your job history. Now, even if you are doing a job now, like for example, you're a realtor now, and your job history was as a, an IT professional, uh, a stay-at-home mom who worked in the PTA, that's all part of your job history that actually gives you credibility for what you're doing now. That realtor example, for example, you've been a stay-at-home mom, my goodness, you know all the best schools, you know the best places to shop, that's great credibility. You were uh, in IT, you speak geek, Wonderful. All those other geek speakers out there want to use you as their realtor. Um, you want your education there, um, if appropriate. You want your skills. Skills are great for keyword search. Your contact info. I can't tell you how many people I work with and they haven't looked at the contact information in a long time. And they've actually got maybe an email going to their email at a, I'm using the example of realtors for whatever reason, it's coming to mind a lot today, but it'll be their email address at a previous realtor. That's no longer going to them. It's gonna to go to whoever picked up their email at that company, or they don't have their current information. So you wanna check that. And connections, again, you need a certain number of connections. So and get into some nitty gritty of some of those components. So mistake number two, I have to mention this because I'm guessing that the majority of you are in business to sell something, a service, a business, a product, um, even the chamber. But please, LinkedIn is not for direct selling. Can you ultimately build a relationship that will help you sell? Absolutely. I get a lot of referrals through LinkedIn, but when I connect with people, it's never about immediately trying to sell them. And you've probably had so many connection requests that's really have really turned you off you know, you can usually spot it. The headline says six figures in six weeks, or I'll bring you, you know, incredible new customers. We know they're going to try and sell to us. So hopefully just delete and don't connect with them. But maybe it doesn't look so obvious. You accept the connection request. The first message you get is, I've got some swamp land in Florida. Would you like to buy it? Well, not quite that, but something equivalent. Um, so it turns people off. Don't do it. Instead, build relationships. My goal on LinkedIn is to make a connection, to start a conversation, a conversation that might lead to a relationship and the relationship that might earn me the privilege of doing business with them or being referred. Now, I often refer people 
and I want to refer to people my connections on LinkedIn. And sometimes I can't because their profiles are so bad. Now, small business owners are often very guilty of this. They're very successful in their work, but LinkedIn, they're just too busy for it. So even if you're not gonna be active on LinkedIn, please at least look respectable so I can refer you. Make it easy for me to refer you so people know what you do and who's the appropriate target client for them. Now your headline, here are some specifics, tips here. Your headline is your mini advertisement. It appears right under your name. And if you look in LinkedIn and you click on the pencil to go into edit, it does not say job title. It says headline. So it used to be, it was 120 characters max. What I have here is about hundred characters. I prefer shorter. If I can't get my message across in fewer words, then I need to rethink my message. But it's actually now 220 characters. So uh, a combination of keywords plus perhaps a tagline or what makes you unique, what you do for your target clients. Uh, the default in LinkedIn, when you add a new job, if you don't click the box that says, don't change my headline, it will overwrite your headline and change it at the top. Don't let it do it. And if it's done it, go back in and change that. Uh, every time you comment on someone's post, your name and your headline is showing, again, that mini advertisement. So make sure that mini advertisement is working for you. Add a banner to your, your profile. It's free, it's easy. I've got one designed for me, so I'm not clever enough to do it myself. Um, but you can use a picture uh, from a logo with your company if it's your own business. You could take a, make sure it's a picture that you're legally allowed to use. I got fined 500 bucks by getting images one time for using something I hadn't paid for. Learned my lesson the hard way. That wasn't even to give me permission to use it in the future, just to, a slap on the wrist to take it down. So make sure you have permission to use it. There are lots of free sites. Just because it's on Google doesn't mean it's free to use. Uh, add some pizzazz to your background. I keep using Mark as an example because he happens to be showing up at the top there. But you know he's adding a little bit of pizzazz to his background. Pauline's uh, got some advertising for the chamber. Um, so in the same way on LinkedIn, use something in your background banner. If it's not your own company, add something related to your personal brand. Now, this is not available to everybody, but I will mention it because for those of you that have it, it's pretty cool. It allows you to say you're providing services. The number of services you can offer is a bit limited. So for example, I can't say LinkedIn. It's not one of the options in the drop down menu. Um, but if you've got it, uh, people can send you, even if you don't have premium LinkedIn, you can uh, send a, me a free message because I've set it to be that way with this feature. So if you've got it, do take advantage of it. Uh, so here's my tip about your about section. We only see the first three lines before you have to click on see more. And I don't know about you, but I don't know many people who don't have an attention, uh, sh a short attention span. So they don't click on see more. So you wanna pack a punch in those three lines. Now this looks like more than three lines just because I've made it in a bigger font to be easier to read. But this is actually my first three lines. Uh, and you need to pack a punch. So here's my formula, my magical mystery formula for the first three lines. Something compelling, intriguing, um, what you're going to do for them um, and a call to action. So my attempt to be intriguing is I specialize in social media for the socially reluctant. I love working with people who are just kind of just feel awkward about putting themselves out there and making it, you know, finding a way for them to feel comfortable doing it. Um, and if nothing else, it makes people smile. You know, I'll help you transform your LinkedIn profile to get results. I'm telling you what I'm going to do for you. And then I tell you what I want you to do. Contact me to discuss how I can help you shine. I've actually got my email showing right there. I have my other contact information below. But if you never click on see more, I've got my whole message right here. Now, this doesn't mean don't fill in the rest of it. But uh, make sure you really pay attention to those first three lines. Some years ago, it used to be you would go to someone's profile. You would see the whole about section um, at a glance. 
and there was a sort of format, a, a nice telling your story kind of format. But now, because it's only the first three lines showing, if you don't grab me, I'm never going to open to read the rest of that wonderful story. Wonderful new thing that LinkedIn added is called Featured. Everybody has it. If you are not using it, ah, why not? You can add videos, articles, posts, links. Be a little careful. Some of them can end up looking a little ugly. So you, you post it and you think, boy, this is ugly. You've got a black screen or something. Um, you might need to rethink it. If you are a member of an association uh, or the chamber, you may be on the, the board, you can post, you can pay um, a meeting for the chamber. Doesn't have to always be about you. You could promote an organization you're involved in, but it's very visual, right in the middle of your profile, looks like this. I've got a selection of things, um, a document post, a video post and a, a, an article I've written. They all appear a little differently. Um, so you do have to pay attention to what it looks. And I'm showing those first three lines again, the 1600 characters total. So please, if you do nothing else, but go away from this presentation and add something to your featured section, um, you'll be ahead of the game. You'll add a little bit of pizzazz to your profile. Size matters, guys. Uh, and gals. Now, if you have less than 100 connections, you're only visible to 5% of the LinkedIn population. Now, 5% of half a billion, still a lot, but you'll find yourself constantly limited by the visibility when you're searching for people. If you've got over 500, now 500, over 500 is algorithmically, I didn't think it was a real word, but somebody told me it was. Um, it's algorithmically a magic number in that you now become visible and are visible to about 95% of the LinkedIn population, which is huge, but I'm not gonna let you rest on your laurels just because you have 500. The number I recommend that you should have is at least 30 connections for every year of your age. I will pause while you do your math. I will look at the expressions on your faces to see some of you looking a little panic stricken. I need a calculator. <laughs> yeah, when it, it's fun when I do this in person and I can see the kind of little calculations going on. <laughs> um, now, the reason I say 30 uh, per year of your age is you meet 30 people professionally a year, at least. Why would you not connect with them on LinkedIn? Uh, a lot of times, because this 500 is a kind of magic number in terms of being visible, and it used to be people said, well, you needed over 500, and it showed on your profile over 500. It didn't show the number beyond that. It actually does show the number beyond that, but at the top, it just says over 500. People got that, and then they just rested. Sorry, no, you got to keep going. You got to work your network. Uh, you need to increase your visibility. Now, the size of your network is part of increasing your visibility. And that is partly when you post something on LinkedIn, it's only visible, it goes into the newsfeed of about 10% of all of your connections. So if you have 500 connections, it's only going into the newsfeed of about 50 people. They're only seeing it if they happen to be looking at their newsfeed at that time. 500 views does not mean 500 people saw it. 50 does not mean uh, read it. It just means they might have seen it if they've been looking. And the way to increase it, well, one, having a larger network helps. So like 10% of 5,000 is going to do you more good than 10% of, five, of 500. But this is the real magic. Get engaged, involved. When you like, comment, or share, we can blame the algorithm on LinkedIn all the time. But it's really not just the algorithm, it's people behavior. If I meet you at, uh, at a chamber event and I'm just talk, 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 talk at you, you go away, you go, oh, that woman is such a bore. Uh, but if we have a conversation back and forth, um, I comment on you know, what you're doing, I ask you questions, I'm curious. Now you're more interested in me as well. And that's exactly the behavior on LinkedIn that is rewarded. Congratulate people. It's not hard to. People love it. The algorithm loves it. I call it feeding the LinkedIn algorithm fishes. 
but it's all based on human behavior. We love it. Say happy birthday. If people have their birthday on LinkedIn, they've chosen to show it. It means they like people saying happy birthday. You know, you're at work walking down the aisle. You say happy birthday, Susie. Susie doesn't say, oh, no, don't say that to me at work. It's not professional. Um, no, she says, great. Thank you. Hey, a group of us going out for drinks after work. Want to join us? Or even better, hey, there's cake in the break room. Want to have some? Great. So don't be afraid to superficial things are okay to do. Comment on other people's posts. It's great. Um, it shows you your name, your headline, or part of your headline will show up. Free advertising. Make an offer to help. Don't always be selling. Um, just ask someone if there's something they can do, you can do to help them. And don't make it all online. Call or plan to make an in-person meeting. But LinkedIn has added new features where you can actually set up right there in your uh, messaging area, a Zoom or, or Microsoft Teams or one other kind of meeting uh, right there. But take it offline, it's just fine. To post or not to post. So I'm gonna go through this pretty quickly. Uh, if you just post, remember that 10%, if you engage actively, you might get the views. And again, views does not not mean they actually saw it. It means the number of people who might've seen it up to 25%. It's that interaction that's magic. Uh, new on LinkedIn, and this is what I call a terrible slide that we're always taught not to do. Never do a slide with lots of small print, but I did this on purpose. purpose. In fact, I could have made it worse. Uh, because this is only 24 things that are new on LinkedIn in the last three months, there's actually over 40. It's overwhelming. A lot of this stuff is not important to you. Some of it's important to job seekers. Uh, some of it's only on the, the um, mobile app. Uh, there's a lot. So I'm not going to talk about all of it. I'm going to point out a few of them that I think are worthwhile. And one I've talked about already, featured. Absolutely take advantage of featured. Name pronunciation. I numbered a number of you as you were logging in have names that were maybe a little bit difficult or you're probably finding people mangle your names all the time. Now, everybody has this, it's available to all. You go to your profile on your mobile. You record your name when you're in the editing section there. And then it will show up on both desktop and mobile, it says your name. Now I've done it, my name, Sandra Clark, not that difficult to say, it's short. I've added in a little marketing message because I've got 10 seconds to play with. Um, but I know some people who filled that 10 seconds with a marketing message that's so long, I can't even understand what their name is. So don't detract from the fact that we wanna know what your name is. So please take advantage of that for those of you with names that are mangled. I always go now to someone's profile and look to see if they have that. So when I speak to them, I can be respectful and hopefully pronounce their names correctly. Um, stories are only available on, mo on mobile. I don't know that that's going to remain the same. If you are a fan of stories on Facebook or and Instagram, it's now available on LinkedIn. I'm not a fan on Instagram or Facebook, so not on LinkedIn either, but because it's relatively new, it's a great marketing opportunity for you because it's new, there's more promotion of it. Polls are new on LinkedIn. Polls can, uh, that's also on desktop, not just on mobile. That could be interesting for some of you could, to try um, uh, to get engagement. Headline is now 220 characters. I'm not a fan of the really long ones, but it can be useful for some people who are frustrated by being constrained by the 120. A lot of stuff to do with jobs uh, for job seekers. The green uh, frame that goes around people's, people's pictures showing they're open for work. There's a place in LinkedIn where you can practice and record your answers to an interview question and then send that practice question to a friend or your career coach to see what they think. Um, it's a little tricky to learn how to use, but I think it's, it's brilliant. Um, there are numbers of other things also in the... Um, uh, in to do with job seekers. Uh, so have I overwhelmed you yet? <laughs> and oh, I have to answer the question you're going to have if you haven't put it in um, the chat. People always ask this. So I'll ask the first question and then I'll open it up for questions and I'll look in chat. Should you get LinkedIn Premium? 
In general, my answer is no. It's pretty expensive. Job seeker premium is about $30 a month. Uh, business premium is 50. I think it's pretty expensive. Uh, in general, there are some reasons it can be useful. I had premium for seven years because LinkedIn gave it to me for free for some work I did for nonprofits. And to be honest, I used it to show people why they shouldn't be paying for it. Uh, LinkedIn will constantly tell you that you should have it. You'll get better results. Eh, not really. You, if you do a lot of searches on LinkedIn, you do a lot of sales. There's a thing called Sales Navigator. It's about $79 a month. But if you're actively selling, that can be a very good tool. So in general, no, if you really think you need it, maybe, but you can have a conversation with me about that if you think um, that you do. So I'm gonna be looking in chat and seeing what people have been putting there and see if there are any questions. Uh, and I'm looking at my numbers here. It's uh, posting one or more time a week. Oh, the great thing for people who are not sure about if they should post a lot is you're actually better off not posting a lot and just commenting. Comment daily, feed the fish, post once or twice a week, you'll get much more activity. If you're just pushing stuff out there the alg and, and nobody's looking at it or engaging with it, the LinkedIn algorithm is learning that people think you're boring. So don't do it if you're not getting good results. There are better ways to post um, you can talk to me about that if you're interested. So one or two times a week is absolutely fine. If you post once a month, it's, yeah, does it really matter if you do it all? Uh, not sure what to impose to engage my audience and who my audience is. Alice, it's a great question. There's a longer answer. We can maybe have a chat offline about that. To articles, Sue, you might've been frustrated that your articles didn't get much visibility. Unfortunately, LinkedIn don't push them out very much, but it shows thought leadership and you might get better engagement. So it can be worth doing. I would never say start writing articles for LinkedIn, but um, if you're already writing, you wanna post in them. They're a different purpose than a short form post. Uh, uh, it says 500 plus, Nicole, that's because it doesn't show your actual number, except if you engage, it will show your actual number down below. I'll show you where to look for it if you're not sure. Uh, I heard something about LinkedIn that activated. I don't know what that means. Uh, so um, I don't see any, any other questions in chat. Does anybody want to unmute themselves? And um, the slides I'm going to share with people or Pauline is going to share, please do reach out to connect with me on LinkedIn. Tell me where we met. And then if you've got a quick question, I'm happy to answer no charge. 